Okay, I'm going to show you how to work with import export models uh, for UDK. And you'll need to get the ActorX plugin. I've supplied the link. Uh, once you've installed the plugin, uh, restart Max, uh, and then you'll find it under the little hammer here under the utilities. If you click on more, you'll see it here ActorX. Now, this part here is really for the animation side of stuff but I'll show you that a little bit later. Uh, other than that, you can export as, you know, uh, if you've got a static mesh, you export it as a .asc, an ASCII scene file. That's this one here, ASCII scene export .ase. Okay, so let's set up the grid first, so you'll have to go to your unit setup. And if you go to system unit setup, change that to yeah, keep that in inches, and type in 0 0.0.065, 0 .065. and OK that, uh, and that should say generic units there, and also change your grid. A uh, quick way to change the grid is to right click on the little snaps toggle here. Um, go to your options and change this. Uh, go to your home grid actually and change the grid spacing to to and major lines every eight. And this is you kind of in the UDK setup. So let me just create a simple box to export. Uh, the idea is when you create an object, I'll just put snaps on the object off the, the axis there and I'll bring the height up. Simple box. And I'm going to turn the snaps back off. Uh, and what I want to do is click on hierarchy and I just want to move the pivot back to zero zero zero. So I click on move down here and I right click on each of these to reset them to zero. That brings the axis down here. Um, a few other things you should note is that it should be facing along the x-axis if you've done a character or something it should be facing along this way but this is just a box it doesn't really matter as long as it looks quite like this uh, first put a texture on it any texture just uh, as long as it's a bitmap or something See, I'll just find any old texture to throw on it. Okay. Um, I'm just convert this to an editable poly first, and I'll just give it a name. I'll call it my box. And if you want to create like a collision mesh for this, um, I mean UDK will do an approximate collision mesh, but let's say for example this is quite organic shaped, and then you would want your own custom collision. So I'll just copy paste this and to convey the zero one. Still want to call it my box, but I'll put in capital letters UCX underscore, which just means Unreal Collision uh, Object. And I'll move that back. So there's two objects there. So if I select, uh, select our my box. Don't have to select them all. Just my box. And uh, make sure yeah everything's okay. In fact, I can just export, export. Not selected, but just an export. And choose. Uh, the ASC. Let me just open up UDK while I'm waiting here. And I'll just pop this on my desktop for just now. And you can just call it my box. Uh, what should be ticked here? The first two here should be ticked. 
those two should be ticked and those two should be ticked so the setup I've got here is ready to go uh, you just copy this and ok that ok so let's open it up ok so you see all this stuff don't worry about that just right click anywhere and do an import and then find your my box and open that we'll ask you what's your package called let's call this uh, test package 001 what's the group called? Well, I could put in boxes so I've got a group of boxes a group of trees, trees you know etc and the name's my box so ok that and don't worry about this uh, generated import count ratio 24 slash 8 exceeds expected it always says something here so don't worry about it and what should happen is I've got my box there so there it is and if I turn on this collision, show collisions I should see this green line appear and that's the, the second box that I made with the UCX underscore uh, in front of the name of it it's not a real object, it's just an outline so if I was to change the shape of that so let me just choose you see it's my box um, and I'll just choose these four shrink them down and move them up Export again. Go back to UDK. Let's close that. I'll right click on this and do re import. Re import static mesh. Overwrite collision data, yes. Okay. Okay. Back into this. And do the same again. Click on this. And you'll see that new collision mesh there. So you can make custom collision meshes to go with your model. And obviously you don't see it. It will affect the character as he moves towards it. Okay, to get materials onto your uh, object, you have to assign it through this little green arrow over here. But you have to have it selected. So we could go ahead and just uh, bring in a texture and start to create a material. So I'll do that. Um, import. Let me import this UV checker. Test pack zero to one. Group boxes UV checker. That's fine. So um, you can change these compression settings. Like if you've got a nor normal map you want to bring in, you want to change this one to TC normal map. But other than that, you leave it at TC default. And if you've got a grayscale, you can put it on TC grayscale uh, for like height maps, bump maps, opacity maps, emission maps, etc. Okay. So it brings that in there. Now I still need to create a material, that's just a texture, just one texture. So I'll right click on it, to create a new material. And it adds this underscore mat after it, which is fine. Still under the same group of boxes, still under my test package. Okay, that. So if I go into the material now, just double click it, you'll see that I've got this here. Now, if I just left click, I'm only just moving, I'm panning about with just a left click and drag with the mouse. You have to hold down control, and that way you're dragging individual items like this, you know, uh, it pans and I want to channel this this is uh, the black square here is all your channels everything you see here really uh, red your red channel, green channel, blue channel, alpha channel this has only got one channel so I'll just channel that and it diffuse and you see this preview of it and you can rotate about here 
You can also have a bit of fun and channel like the red into specular. Uh, and if you hold down L, you can move the light about in here. There's not very much happening. Channel the blue into specular. I'll overwrite that one. So it just means where, wherever there's blue, more blue, there'll be more specularity. Another way to show you this is to do uh, right click and do a texture, uh, new texture sample, and I can channel the blue in here, I think. Uh, it's not that, I think you do it, hold down M for multiply. Click M. That doesn't work because of the screen share, uh, the screen recorder. But if you look for maths and uh, let's just do add because that looks for an input. So add blue and then constant. A constant is just a one, just one number. I can change the value of this to 1. Channel that in there. And if I check this little box, I can preview it. So it's shown me, um, it should be a multiplier. No, it shouldn't be added, it should be multiplier. I just want to see the, the blue channel as it is. That give you an idea. Multiply that by one. There you go, you can see the blue areas are brighter. So that would be the specularity level on this. Or if I channel the green one in, you can see the green channels are brighter, the red one in. And I can channel something like that, I can channel that into emissive so that those areas are brighter. I can change the multiply amount by 0.5. It's not as strong. Or point one. This way, I'm still lighting up a little bit, not a lot. Uh, if I hold down, or hover over that and press Alt and click, I'll take it away. Uh, you can mess around with stuff like that. I just don't click that. don't really need these at all. Uh, so for each of your textures, if you bring in a normal map, the way I showed you using the TC underscore normal map compression when you bring it, when you import it, to bring it in here, you would basically just choose it, and bring this up, with that still selected, hold down T and click, and it should come in. Seem to be want to work. Um, it's only because I'm screen sharing at the minute. But if I bring in texture sample, I can, you know, I can do it that way, and I can find it. You know, I can look for it in the browser, and you know, click on it, find it that way, and use it again. Let's try it as a normal map and see what craziness we get. Yeah, some craziness. Trying to the light about. And we get some strange things happening because it's not a normal map. <laughs> okay, so that's materials. Once you're happy, just check on that. Click this green arrow, green tick. Um, you want to go back into this here. Let me just open up this browser again. So we've got the material now. We've got this. So we'll just turn off textures for a minute. Uh, sorry, turn on materials and static meshes. This way we're just seeing what's important. If I click on this material to select it, come back to this panel and click on this little green arrow. That brings it in and applies it to the model. It will look blue at first. That's only because 
we're kind of working on it right away but if you close this and open it back up again that goes away and that's basically how you bring in your model with a collision mesh hope that helped and enjoy making models and enjoy messing around with your EK. Okay, have fun.